for some, the lifestyle of the late 60s was bohemian. Dropouts from the corporate culture joined communes on campuses, in cities, and on farms. San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury was the capital of the counterculture. It was there that the kids with long hair, beads, and flowers were first called hippies, and the name caught on. Underground newspapers, head shops, and free clinics soon transformed old neighborhoods in many cities. Mystical religions from the East became popular. The Maharishi Mahesh Yogi's program of transcendental meditation attracted thousands of followers. Rock festivals drew huge crowds in the late 60s. The biggest was Woodstock. Nearly half a million kids jammed onto a 600-acre dairy farm near Woodstock, New York in August 69 to dance, sing, smoke, and make love. Despite shortages of food and water and heavy rainstorms, Woodstock was a peaceful celebration. From now on, we would call these kids the Woodstock generation. Regardless of lifestyle, most Americans benefited from the prosperity of the late 60s. Few seemed worried about inflation. Gasoline was 33 cents a gallon. And when it got hot, lots of us headed for the beach. Summer vacations helped us forget our troubles. Time to relax, get a suntan, and people watch. The late 60s were violent and frightening years. The issues of war and peace and the survival of the planet concerned more Americans than ever before. We were divided as a people, and our voices sometimes grew loud and angry. But whatever the issue or cause, most of us agreed we had the right to stand up, speak out, and march for what we believed in. And in time, the passions of these years would prove to be indications not of weakness, but of strength. <laughs>